Look at him. Look at him. He was ready. Everybody, I have in my hands what unfortunately is the end of an era. This is the last Game Informer issue that will ever be printed. After 33 years, Game Informer has been shut down by GameStop. The people that brought us the latest news, reviews, and insights from the ever-evolving world of gaming, as they said on their website. From the early days of pixelated adventures to today's immersive virtual realms, they've been honored to share this incredible journey with us, the readers. And the quest has ended, unfortunately, as of this point. Now, Game Informer has gone through a lot of turmoil over the years. They've already gone through a round of layoffs. But this was one that really hit hard because I've been subscribed to Game Informer for a really, really long time. Um, obviously, magazines aren't what they used to be. Yeah. But the legacy of Game Informer has been around forever. You know, you, they're always the first to have the big, huge cover stories of games and stuff like that. Um, Don't want that on the. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Always the first to have the big old cover stories and everything, um, and uh, it's just it's kind of a shame. It's kind of it's really sad to see see this legacy that's been created for so long to be closed down by GameStop, who for the longest time I wish that Game Informer wasn't ever tied to GameStop because I felt like the complication of having to get a subscription. You have to go into GameStop. Yep. You have to subscribe to their Power Plus membership. Yep. They just recently decoupled the subscription from the GameStop membership. Unfortunately, it was too little, too late. They were brought in their off, or they weren't even brought in the office. I don't think they were just. I think they just got an email or something like that. That was just like, "Hey, we're uh, you guys are all laid off. Everybody, <laughs> all gone." <laughs> By the way, you know, no, it's not funny. You it's know, sad. You laid people off. We're laying you oh, off too. Oh my god. Yeah. So. Um, it's a really, really big bummer. Did you all ever, I mean, I know, Austin, you've you've been subscribed to Game Informer for a while and stuff like that. Did you ever get into Game I Informer? I did, I did. Like, um, right whenever I made it to my, like, first duty station, I subscribed to Game Informer. Yeah. And they would actually, like, that was back in 2019, they would actually mail me the copy of Game Informer. And, like, mm. uh, I remember that time frame because Assassin's Creed 2 was coming out. And they sent me the Game Informer for it. And it was, like, fucking, I was reading it. I loved it. Everything. But, um, yeah, I subscribed through GameStop. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they used to have, I feel like they haven't had as many, like, major, huge, like, holy shit cover story moments yeah. as they used to. It's like, for example, Dragon Age Veilguard is the last one they had. That one had just been announced already, and then they piggybacked off of the announcement with the magazine kind of deep dive. But their deep dives were always... I mean, they were invited to all these studios to have mm -hmm. all these really deep dive conversations. I just finished reading the last issue where it was about the making of Hades 2 and like kind of digging into that experience quite a bit. And yeah. um, apparently the next cover, whatever it was going to be, was going to be a pretty big one. And they were like 70% of the way done with the magazine Ooh. when they got announced that this, so whatever they were working on is not even going to come out, which is kind of unfortunate. That sucks. They yeah. should at least let them come out with that one. At least like a yeah. final farewell. Yeah, yeah that'd been awesome. Yeah. yeah, be like, you have a month left, you know, like produce whatever you want to produce in your this final it. send off magazine, you know? You better keep that one. Can't even know, that right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. So it's it's kind of crazy, but I mean the the reason I want to talk about this not only just because like it's it's a bummer that this happened, but like it kind of shows a sign of like the evolution of media, media. games, media, and yeah. stuff like that. Because you know we've seen places not just magazines go down, like Electronic Gaming Monthly has been long gone forever. Uh, Nintendo Power has been long gone. Yep. We've seen like a lot of st all this stuff go online. Game Informer try to keep up with that with like GameInformer.com. They were producing all these news and articles and things like that on their website all the time. Uh, but then even places like, you know, IGN and Polygon. And then there was, a, I think, Waypoint got shut down. And then well, there was another one that recently got shut down. Um, <clears throat> but like big publications, even online, are getting shut down. And it's like hard for places like this to stay afloat because like, just media keeps evolving. Nowadays, it's like if you're not doing TikToks all the time, like, that's what I blame it on. It's yeah. the reels, the TikToks, it's the quick, 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 quick. You just well, get IGN to the point. has been doing a lot more. 
Yeah, they no, have. They have quick content. I'm like, eh, good for them. Yeah, Isn't that one guy doing it. It's awesome. But it's the evolution of the of the uh, generation. You know, yeah. they want the quick <clears throat> style news, and they want want it then and there. They don't want to read don't a whole read. magazine or article or go to a website. Even hell, I had a hard I don't, time reading a whole magazine. Yeah, same. <laughs> and I don't even want to go to a website anymore. I just want something quick in there. And most of the time, I get half my news from TikTok. They just blurt it out like here you go this is it okay i got it yeah but it's um, so hard sometimes so like i mean that is the where we you know where things are but it's just like I, I'm, I miss the the deep dive like analysis of like like you know reading about i'm excited to read about the dragon age veil guard because it's like you're gonna get way more insights into like what the developers are thinking and about the decisions that we look at like Oh, that seems dumb, or that seems silly. But then you can kind of see where they're coming from because the article will dive into that. Man. And we just don't get that anymore. See, I kind of wish because they would just put it in a video. Yeah. <laughs> I would and watch a video people, like that. Yeah. People don't care. Yeah, they don't care. I know that's that's, that's the unfortunate the part. Issue. Is like people just don't care about stuff that I still care about. I'm like, man, I You're wish a they dying did. Breed, Brett. <laughs> I am a dying. I breed. think people care. It's just how they're going to consume it. And yeah, no one's really reading anymore. Which is sad. I think yeah. it's mostly it's just it's um it's not that people don't care, it's just the the yeah. generation of it of the people that don't care. There's still people out there that care, you know, that want to deep dive into it, but now we're switching over it's not like that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. My, my thought is just like you can't you can't do that with a sixty second clip. You know, you have oh, no, to you have to get yeah. to the facts and stuff like that. So it's like what are we missing by people not being able to consume these more like, like Jason Schreier and his like super deep dive investigative articles and stuff like that. If that stuff dies out, then like do people have enough knowledge of a conversation or a topic to talk about it? They don't. Yeah. But as long as they get that 60 seconds of like, they think it's true facts, then they're, they're going to stick with it. It's in their brain. I mean, I follow people, and they'll they'll go and read these articles, and then they'll take out the bits that they f- find that's important, mm-hmm. and obviously it's double edged sword because they could leave some important things out potentially, uh, mm-hmm. intentionally or unintentionally, and it's just like okay, like here's the thing that makes the thing, and here's the premise, and here proves the premise or whatever, however mm-hmm. you want to put it. It's just like well, that's the problem. It's like yeah. we're relying on. People, people like us to I mean we have so many <laughs> how many people do we have out there that call us out all the time like oh you're wrong about this you're wrong about that but they're also looking at a bunch of other people who are probably also wrong too you know that oh well, yeah that share this information so it's like without you doing your first hand research I mean that's why when we grew up you know we had to do we had to have first hand where we couldn't have an article that talked about a thing we had to have the first hand source yeah, whatever we had they to called go it you trust know the sources you know yeah and it's like that stuff is kind of going awesome away biased. now. <laughs> and it's just like I'm nervous. I'm concerned about like what that looks like for the future of everything of like what will people be able to critically think as well as. Well, everything has been politi- then, politicized you know? regardless of what side you're on. So it's kind of hard to have like a general here's this. Like I think I think with this, it's more like of a general like here's the gameplay. What is it like? And now, well, if you go on like YouTube or something, TikTok, it's probably more politicized. Well, I mean, yeah, somebody's always going to put their bias into it. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's going to be there's a lot less unbiased media that's available. I just subscribed to a newsletter the other day that they were like, "We're giving you the quick, hard hitting facts." <clears throat> that's going to be, you know, we're going to present you the media or the information you need to know very quickly and short, succinct in a newsletter form. Like, oh, that sounds kind of kind of cool. And then if I click, they they sort cite everything, so then I can click on articles. Then as I subscribe to it for a couple of weeks, I realize, oh no, they're very much biased towards one direction. I was like, that's not what I want. I want, I want a little bit of both, you know. So it's like, um, but I don't want to go on the political route with this. I want to focus in on just right, like right. media is changing and evolving, and it's like, what does the future hold? Yeah, what does the future hold? And like, how how can we bring back? Game stuff like this, not Game Informer necessarily, because I don't, I don't think we can bring back Game Informer. I mean, hopefully, maybe they get resurrected at some point. I, like, I think, I, I think the only way to bring it back is like Austin said, is what IGN is doing now. Because I follow them on TikTok, is mm-hmm. their short things to the point. And if you want more, go to this website and read more. 
Oh well, shit, that's what we gotta start doing, y'all. <laughs> Honestly, You're a gamer, let's put out them TikToks. <laughs> this is the problem right here. You get so much information so fast, and people so want more and more information faster and faster and faster. Yeah. And so you're not gonna sit down to like you know back in the day you would take time to sit down and read something like you would take the time to like I'm gonna focus on this right now but with this it's just like I want as much as I can as fast as I can <clears throat> so, so that, it's hard to have that like even with I know there's a lot of podcasts I follow on YouTube but I only cl- I only catch the clips that are like you know five to ten minutes maybe of that long podcast it's like why don't i just listen to the full podcast it's like well, i don't know i just want to listen to the clips yeah like something not everything that podcast i'm not i'm gonna want to listen to not everything in this i'm gonna want to read now everything um, in the inner gamer podcast you yes. do want to listen to don't get us well, wrong ours you want to listen to ours <laughs> ours is cut up so on youtube if you want to look at it that way yeah so you can catch uh, anyway anyway yeah what brett said just watch listen to the whole thing yeah um but yeah i think that's how i approach it so it's like Give me a clip with a clear premise that's going to focus on one thing. Mm. And sometimes yeah. some of those things I watch, they spread out into different things. But Also, I, what's so bad? Know. I'm I subscribed to that, and I haven't gotten a fucking anything. I know. Same here. Like, Same I haven't here. gotten jack shit. Yeah. I bet so you're not service. really subscribed to it like you thought you were. But yeah, I know. Because I, I had a problem. And that, that wasn't a big issue that Game Informer had, and that's probably why they lost a lot of subscriber numbers is that... It wasn't Game Informer's fault. It was GameStop's fault for fucking up on like yeah. the management of it. Because like I, I, I at one point made the mistake of switching the digital version of the app or of the magazine. The app that they had for it didn't work, so I switched back to print. So I thought, That's and then what I did. six months later, I'm like, oh, I'm not getting my magazine. So I called them up, and they're like, oh, we're gonna ship you your back copies, and then resubscribe you or make sure you're still subscribed. I never got those back copies. I call up again. I was like, yo, what's going on? And then they finally brought this out where it was like, you can subscribe directly. And I was like, perfect. I signed up next month. I got my subscription. So like they did fix it. And then now three months later, they're gone. Yeah. It was very sad. Cause yeah. I only got two art, two issues from the new version of the subscription. I was like, so yeah. bummed about that. But I mean, it is, I mean the, I think the biggest change that's happening right now too, is that, you know, there's less, People people have lost trust in outlets and places. Yeah, like too. they've lost trust in I, the IGNs. <laughs> they don't trust the game spots. They don't trust those. They trust people. Mm-hmm. They trust the individuals. And that's why we have places like, you know, I mean, you watch YouTubers. You trust a YouTuber that sits there and talks all day, then you trust CNN. You know, like that's just kind of like the mindset that people have now. <clears throat> And it's, I think it's because they're more real, more raw, you know, and more, more honest and stuff like that. And they could well, be honestly, wrong, they but do, well, I want to say they do more research. I mean, just like with the whole current situation with the former president, like the secret service came to a hearing with nothing to show for anything. And they've had two weeks to prepare for infor- with like answers, but people on the internet are like, have more stuff out there. And you have um, the House representatives being like, I've gotten all this information that you should know from people online who've been like looking over stuff. Like, why aren't you doing your job? I feel like it's the same with people, just normal single people on the internet. Is like they're doing more research or deep diving into certain things. Obviously, they have other opinions that are interesting too that they have a new take on something. And I feel like that's more interesting than having like, hey, let's put something out that's, I mean, it's cool to. It's definitely cool to like go deep dive into some game developers' thought process on something. But you also get a different take on putting that information together, kind of like what we do. You know, we're like, here's what they're doing. It'd be cool if they did this or did that, and just kind of go off on a tangent. Yeah. So mostly, the internet is available for anyone, and we can really do our own research. Yeah, that's what it boils down to. Instead yeah. of having it ready and available on either one website or a magazine, we can easily find up 30 different articles about Vanguard. Yeah, and I think that's the thing with like Game Informer especially, especially with the print magazine, is that, you know, I get this magazine and all the reviews have already come out for it online and have been out for a month because they release they release 10 issues a year or they were, they were releasing 10 issues a year. So it was um, the uh, 10 issues a year were... Um, 
you're not getting one every month, you yeah. know? So yeah. it's like the stuff when you get it is delayed. It's more in depth, but it's like going to be ultimately delayed. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's any of these big outlets. I mean, their biggest issue is that they can't produce fast enough, fast enough. as a person can. Go. And that's, that's the problem that we run into is like, it's all about getting stuff out there as quickly as possible. Um, Cause I feel like people on the internet have a flair to, to their personality and you get that. I don't know if you get so much personality from each writer in here. Obviously, everyone writes a little differently, but I think it's different seeing them animated and speaking and hearing and feeling that opposed to just like reading. Yeah. Well, a lot of them now are like they they started doing like they have their YouTube channel and stuff like that. So they're sitting down. They have podcasts that they're doing. So like they're getting out there as themselves, but they're they're having to promote themselves because they know that GameStop's not going to do it for them. Right. Um, so it's like, it's definitely, it was something that, I mean, that's what Min Max did, you know, like Ben Hansen, he just went off and like, you know, he's now promoting independent games media because he's yeah. like, all my friends got laid off at Game Informer back when they had the first round of layoffs. So he was like, I'm going to start my own thing and just like bring a bunch of contractors in here, which is what we also want to do. So if any of y'all Game Informer writers want to come on a podcast, hit us up. We got you. We can't pay you yet, but we got you. Round four right here. <laughs> can't Come pay on. you yet. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, it's all about personalities now. I mean, it's like everybody on yes. Kind of Funny, they all have their own successful, like Andy, um, Andy Cortez, he has his own successful Twitch channel that he makes money off of. Oh, nice. But he's also on Kind of Funny. Nice. And he's a regular host there. And like yeah. a lot of those guys are doing that. Um, we need to do that, y'all. Like, do we what? need to become our be own successful funny. Twitch channel. Mm-hmm. Like, you have our own, like, the Jason Hobbs channel, the Awesome Morales channel, you know. Then we can really skyrocket, you know what I mean? It's true. Yeah. If I only had more time. I know. More time. More That's time. the crazy part. It's help like, I don't know how job. these people do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, help me <laughs> quit my job. Right now, Donate so he can quit his job. Um, Yeah. It's a wild time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. In. I mean, honestly, it's an ancient relic at this point. It was already was. It's yeah. Just, I mean, we're getting old. I feel old now that that's gone. Like, it's definitely the end of an era. It's sad. Um, I remember getting them and reading, looking through them. It was like, it was cool. Like, give you reason to sit down and just like stop. Yeah. And yeah. Chill. But like, I remember even now, like, I'm just like, remember like gametrailers.com? Like, that used to be the shit before yeah. like YouTube came out. It used to yeah. be great, man. It used to be yeah. great. Remember the, uh, came out with a demo disc. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, was it Game Informer that did? I think so. I want to know if they did one or they might have. I remember. I know one, Electronic like, Gaming Monthly did a demo I think disc. It was that I believe. One. Yeah. I did the demo disc. I would always pick PlayStation those up. One. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just play it over and over yeah. and over. I'm like, mom, yeah. can I buy this? And she's like, eight dollars for a magazine. I'm like, but it's got a demo disc. Got a demo disc, <laughs> ma. I need it every month. I yeah. Guess. yeah, yeah. It was, it was wild. It yeah. was such a different time. But it's, it's, it was really cool to kind of see. I mean, there was some of my favorite. I remember getting the Bioshock Infinite cover story uh, when they first announced that. It was a beautiful cover. That was what I mean. As a person that does, you know, graphic design for a living and stuff like that, I love. Love seeing like I feel like they did a really good job of design on this, especially in a games magazine. Like it was above and beyond anything else that was out there as far as like design goes and like the illustrations they put on the covers and stuff were always like really really fascinating. But that Bioshock Infinite one, I'll never forget that. It was so cool. And uh, they had um, whenever they had their top you know game announcements before we had all these podcasts and stuff out there. That was really fascinating to watch. Um, yeah, just a lot. A lot has changed. Yeah. I also, well, I don't know what I'm going to do right now because I get my what's coming up for the next month in gaming from GameInformer.com. Oh, and no. And now it's gone. So now I got to like do the research myself. I mean, I'm sure I can find other ways, but <laughs> I'm sure there's <laughs> a TikTok, job, out there. <laughs> TikTok out there. TikTok out there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's pretty wild. Sad but days. That's why you come to the Inner Gamer because Game Informer is gone. Yeah, that's right. That's what one of our commenters said. They they messaged us on Instagram. They were like, you know what? It's a bummer, but you know this opportunity. This is the inner gamer is going to take up that mantle. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, I I appreciate that. I don't, don't believe that. Wait, don't mind if hey we now. do. Yes, we can be the next game informer for the next generation. Someone else said that. Yeah. 
Oh, you, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't believe in us? Oh, don't oh believe no, I believe, us, I, Jason? I believe in, I believe in us. Wow. <laughs> I believe. I believe. So, okay. Don't, okay. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'm confused. Judging me. I'm confused. Judge his ass. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Uh, you don't believe it, man. No, I, I believe it. Well, what, 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 what do you think? What do, you what think? do I think? Yeah, I want to know. Tell me. What's I think future? Game Informer should have been dead a long time ago. Oh yeah, Obama. So we're the we're the fucking, next generation. Oh, though, next generation. Yep, yeah, next yeah. generation. Yeah, I'm 45 years old. Next generation. <laughs> yeah, you're. I mean, yeah. you're probably right. It probably should have had its end a while back. I mean, they've they've definitely been struggling to kind of stay relevant yeah. over the years. They should and have stuff been like dead that. a long time ago, and they should have they should have like dove more into the sh- social media aspect and all this stuff with their tick like TikToks reels. They should have like really fucking dove into that, but. They didn't. I don't they see did. anything. Yeah. Well, I don't see anything with Game Informer. Yeah, they don't do I as don't, much. I they don't. don't do as much. I know. They probably weren't even given the money to do anything. So. Probably not. Probably not. Sounds Make this like. magazine for us. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Whatever. Come not. No, can't say that. So do you think it's like the idea of like deep dot like deep story analysis and stuff like that around a game or like the history of a developer or anything like that? Do you guys think that's just dead? I think so. I don't think so. I think so. I don't think so. I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> it's so sad to think about. It, it is. It's, like, like it, it's not, it can't be like the thing. It needs to be other things that you built around it that complement it. So it's like, oh, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know what kind of content you put around that, but you yeah. know, it's just like, oh, here's this other thing. Here's a deep dive into this. Yeah. Into that. It's like, okay, cool. Like, uh, what was it? Gamer? There was a gamers. There's that one documentary channel on YouTube, and they do deep dives into what happened. Like I just watched one, like what happened to like the rise and fall of Overwatch, and like they go in and they do a deep dive of like this is how it started. Here's what the hype was. These are the characters. And they had a low point. You know, it got popular again. The Overwatch League and how that changed and how Overwatch Two handled and how people reacted. And like, I was like, dude, this is awesome. And, I mean, it's literally many documentaries. It's great. That is cool. Like th- those well, are like deep dives. No clip and stuff like that. You know they've been doing this oh, stuff, yeah. and they're they're doing pretty good. I, I hear think. nothing about no clip. Yeah, exactly. really. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, they haven't post posted as much recently. You know what's also interesting to me is that we expect the content to be delivered to us in such a bite sized format now, but gamers generally are demanding for bigger and bigger, more expansive games. I find that so interesting. How there's like a dichotomy there of like. Some games aren't big enough or long enough or whatever, but then it's like I, th- I, think I don't want to read anything. I think it's part of the marketing. Think marketing so? is like, oh, this is the greatest, biggest, and amazing game of all time, and people's expectations aren't tempered at all. And then you see it, like you know, Baldur's Gate three. We're like, okay, like we know what they've done before. They've been pretty big games. They're pretty awesome. And then you get it, you're like, holy shit, this is way better than I anticipated. They didn't go out crazy marketing until like way later, closer to like the game when it was like finished and fully realized. I think other games go out there and like uh, like Halo Five was marketed as a completely different game than what it actually was. Mm. So, and sometimes there's not with the AAA companies, there's not like a a meshed like developers and marketers aren't really speaking together mm. in a way. So. You really gotta set people's expectations. I'm just saying, like, aside from that, like, yes, I agree. But then, like, when a game comes out and it's like, oh, that was only a 10 hour game, like, people say that about certain games and are like, why is that a bad thing? You know, like, it was, it was a negative, like, if you bring out a, a small game now, but I don't know, it's just weird. It's like, you're willing, cause, like, for me, I want less game sizes, but more, content about them i guess but i'm in the minority i think wait what like i want to be able to i love reading like the behind the scenes of how these things were made like i love that stuff but i also don't want when i get to that game to have to commit to a 150 hour experience that's too much that's just crazy because i don't have time for that but i do have time to read a 15 minute article about behind the scenes of a thing but people generally don't have time for a 15 minute article but have time for a 150 hour experience mm. and prefer that involved into that 
150 hour experience. You are yeah, immersed true. into yeah. that world. That's true. You can't get immersed into reading yeah. about someone's backstory on why they. Yeah, I guess you get lost. Yeah, lost in that space. Well, I think we're different when we're podcasting. I yeah. think we're more interested in that kind of stuff anyway. Yeah. It's like, oh, how were these games made? Like, what were the deciding factors? Right. Um, I mean, do you. Because you go watch Netflix, like you don't have a lot of bonus content on there unless it's like a special edition that says, "Oh, here's yeah." Remember when we said the DVDs and we get the behind the scenes yes. and shit, and that's well, all I gone just started now. buying 4K Blu-rays, yeah, because mm-hmm. of the bonus stuff. Well, no, because uh, 28 days later, you can't find that anywhere. Yeah, I remember online. I told you guys. Yeah, <laughs> and I was and I started thinking. I was like, dude, you know, one day you're gonna come up here. Like, I I don't subscribe to Disney, so I'm not, I can't watch any of the Disney stuff. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna start buying some of my those DVDs, and I think, well, I forgot what my point was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the bonus content. There you go, bonus content. <laughs> right back at it. <laughs> and it's like I get those DVDs, and I'm like, fuck yeah, they got bonus content in here. Yeah. And like, either you go online and watch them, or you don't get to see them unless they're like rarely on any of the streaming services for bonus yeah. content. I did love in the Last of Us TV show. They had like the six minute like featurette at the end of it on every episode. That was really nice. Cause I didn't have to work for it. You just like go and watch it while you're oh, yeah. after the credits or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. But yeah, well, anything else y'all want to add? World's changed. We're old. Yep. There you go. Information's fleeting. <laughs> there you go. No, nothing matters anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing lasts. Black Friday's around the corner. <laughs> That's how old we are. Uh, we think Black Friday. Black Friday. Friday. Uh, Brett, you're the oldest. It's the last. last no, I'm not. Mentally. You're, you're older. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last ever issue. Of Game Informer. It's very sad. I'm never again be able to pull open these pages, but that's okay. You're going to hang it up? Because that's what Tech Talk's for. You're going to put it in a, in a frame? And you should. Probably. You need yeah. to. It sucks it's that game. <laughs> I know. I know. Of all things for them that's to go out. They need to let them do like a final print. I feel like a final print will be like, they should have came out with like variant covers. or I don't know. Never mind. I'm getting too. Yeah, it's too much. They didn't know, man. That, that, that is dead. That's <laughs> dead. Yeah. Let that go. That's right. Well, let us know what you think about GameStop shutting down Game Informer. Do you miss Game Informer? Or are you... Like Jason, okay with it dying, <laughs> hoping it would have died a long time ago. <laughs> Let us know what you think in the Saving comments the below. Save the trees. <laughs> Save them trees. That's a good point. Environmentally friendly, you know. Uh, that is what it is. EMP, we we'll lose all technology. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> then we wouldn't have to worry about Game Informer because there's no games. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look wow, at that. That's full circle right there. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Happy Black Friday. <laughs> 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 Just around the corner. (laughs) Just around the corner.